when you get a new model out of the box it only knows the data it has been trained on which is normally a generic huge set of data all that model does is predict the next token and i mean the pre-trained model the base model if you would try to ask it a question about specific domain it won't be able to do so if you want a model to answer questions about a specific domain then you need to fine tune that model on a custom data set these data sets are normally in form of question and answer but this process could be flawed as those question and answers could be wrong toxic or harmful that is where reinforcement learning with human feedback or rlhf was used where answers were ranked in terms of helpfulness toxicity etc the structure of the data set in these rlhf was straightforward for each row there was one chosen answer and one rejected answer the goal of rlhf was to guide the model to output the preferred answer but then it was a manual process and human makes mistake and this was a costly and manual and very very taxing process which used to take a lot of time and increase the cost astronomically one of rlhf like technique is direct preference optimization or dpo in short this was first described in this paper which you can see on your screen and this is a seminal diagram pro from that paper and a very very famous one in my humble opinion dpo at the moment is the best way to fine tune a model on a specific domain dpo simplifies control by treating the task as a classification problem it uses two models the trained model and a copy of it is called as a reference model during the fine tuning the goal is to make sure that the trained model outputs higher probabilities or preferred answers than the reference model conversely we also want it to output lower probabilities for rejected answers so primarily what is happening here is that we are penalizing or punishing the llm for bad answers and rewarding it for good ones by using the llm itself as a reward model dpo efficiently aligns the model's output with human preferences it results in a more stable more efficient and computationally less demanding process one of the best way to fine tune a model using dpo dataset is to use hugging face dpo trainer dpo trainer requires dataset in a specific format with three columns prompt chosen and rejected in this video i am going to show you as how to convert any dataset to a dpo dataset which is compatible with dpo trainers dataset format which is prompt chosen and rejected so let's get started i will be using google colab for this demo so let me go and log in to my google colab so this is my google google colab first thing we need to do is to install this data sets library so let's install it don't take too long and then we are going to import all the prerequisites so that is done now before i move forward forward so the data set which i am going to convert into dpo compatible format is this one intel's orca dpo pairs if you look here this data set has three columns system question four columns system question chosen and rejected so if you remember our dpo trainer requires prompt chosen and rejected so chosen and rejected are already there but prompt is not there so how do we convert these two columns to system the system and question to prompt or we could either pick one of them or maybe there is no chosen or rejected how should we go about it so i'm going to show you in the code how you can map these columns to the proper one and then convert them accordingly so the goal is to have this data set into this format okay so let's go back to our colab and here let's import these libraries torch 
and also the load data set which we are going to use that is done now let's define a function which is doing to do going to do all the grunt work now in this function and i am calling it dpu underscore format but what is happening here is that i have um, so i am passing it a data set which will be this intel's uh, data set which will have four column system question chosen and rejected then once it receives this um, example data set i will pick up this system column the first column here and then i will assign it to systems variable then i will pick up question column from here i will assign it to question variable then i will pick up chosen column assign it to chosen rejected column assign it to rejected and if your data set has any other names just simply replace those names here and then assign them accordingly so we already have chosen and rejected so it means two of them are good but we still need the prompt one in that case what i am doing here is i am simply concatenating these two system and question into prompt one so that makes a prompt so if you go here system is simply a message to the platform that what it is supposed to do and then we the prompt is what the question which we are going to ask so uh, sometimes system message is there or not but question is always there and that is why we will have answer and stuff so you can either concatenate it or if you want you can simply just go with question up to you so it depends upon your data set how do you want to do it and it could be the case that your chosen answer may be in different columns you can concatenate them you can pick and choose so here you would need to do some data pre-processing so now so once i have concatenated or uh, you know connected both system and question here and assigned it to prompt i am simply returning this yes on here in the response to my uh, calling function so and this is what is required by dpo trainer okay now let's move forward let's load that intel's data set which i just showed you from hugging face and the command of doing it is this so what i'm doing here is i am simply loading using the load data set option here and let me close it and i am giving it this data set name and i'm only picking up the two percent of the data set because it's a big data set i just want to make it quick for this video so i'm just picking up two percent of it so let me did i run the above one oh, i didn't so let me run this one that is done let me run this one and it is going to load the data set data set has been loaded it's very quick because it's a very very short data set now i am i have loaded the data set and now let's get the original column so this command is going to pick up all the four columns name system question chosen and rejected because we don't want them so we will remove them later on and i will show you now how so hugging face data set library is amazing so you can see what is happening here is i am simply passing um, dpu format the function which we defined above and i am using the map function on this data set so it is going to map all the columns of the existing data set with these columns and then it will return it and then i'm asking it to remove the original column so it will remove these all four columns and it will replace them with our own dpo format like this let me run it that is done now let's try to print out a row to see what it did i'm just going to use maybe one second row there you go so chosen rejected and prompt now your data set is ready and you can maybe check another one you can say data set and two let's let's run it there you go chosen rejected and prompt and it has just concatenated it in the prompt that you're a helpful assistant who always brought explanation and then the actual prompt here how good is that so you have created your own data set which is dpo compatible and then now 
uh, let's suppose you have thousands and thousands of rows in your own custom data set you can just simply convert it to dpu which is a direct preference optimization one and it already has the preferred answer there and then you can use again face D, this dpu trainer and then you can train it out and i will drop the link to it in video description it's very very interesting so this is how you fine tune the model on your own uh, custom data set and you would of course need to model a reward model and uh, in the reference model in order to use it and that is another story for another uh, time but remember this having a data set is a key so if your data set is of high quality your model will be of high quality so i would highly highly suggest that you spend as much time as possible on your data set that's it guys let me know what do you think if you have any question or if you're stuck let me know i'll be happy to help if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel and if you're already subscribed then please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching